all right hello everyone and peace of the lord to all of you i hope my voice coming good please let me know if you have any problem uh, today our topic about uh, a muslim his name is shaheed uh, i'm an ex-muslim lady she sent me an email to patreon today a few hours ago maybe four or five hours ago something like that and she said to me, if I can talk about this person, I had never heard of him before, but I did little search. And uh, this is today what we will do. Uh, for sure, I will not go to talk about every video he made, but we will, from what I just saw, obviously he is a donkey, certified one. And actually, I challenge him, if he dare, to prove to me that he's not a donkey, uh, to call me. Actually, I'm going to use his own words, to prove that he is a donkey i'm not insulting the quran says not me that the similarity between those who carry books in their back and those who do not know how to read it is the same as an ass so obviously this person is an ass he did not read you know uh, he did not read his book Or typing in English <laughs> you know there is uh, like these days there's many people like uh, Android tits and everyone he want to play with words and supposedly he will show you that he's smart but you know that will not work because simply you have to support what you say uh, by what you believe you know in chapter 62 verse number 5 it says the likeness of those who entrusted in the law of Moses so Muhammad now is bashing the Jews as usual. Yet apply uh, uh, apply it not, as the same as. Uh, by the way, translation is not fault, not not accurate, but I will go with it. The same as the likeness of an ass carrying a box. Now, if we ask this guy, who is obviously for me, he looked like an ass carrying a book. I don't know if he carry it or he don't even have it at all. Did he even read his book? I'm going to prove to you that this idiot, he never read his book. He did not know what in his book from his own words. Kabich. And remember, I don't have time, actually, you know, to, to look at his videos. But what I saw is very enough to prove that he is, you know, uh, he is just a talker. You know, there's many talker. And those talkers, they play with words and they never answer a question. You ask them. And I will show you an example of that. So here we have a video of him. Let us see where is the video. And if you don't mind, invite your friends. Obviously, many of you don't appreciate what we do. We are coming here just for entertainment and ha ha ha. Uh, if we go and find, we find this video here as an example, not limited. The video title is Shahid Bolson on Judo Christian Value. Judo Christian Value. So, uh, this uh, gentleman now, he will show you how funny is the Christian value <laughs> and how he can answer that. Just wait. Play it again. Judeo-Christian values is an oxymoron. I mean, it would be like uh, if you called the NAACP and the KKK sister organizations. Look, Hitler didn't come from Baghdad. The Nazis weren't an anomaly in Western Christian European history. The, the, the Holocaust was a crescendo of anti-Jewish hatred that had been building in waves in Europe for centuries. Christians like to use the term Judeo-Christian because it obscures the vicious, relentless, uh, long history that they have of anti-Jewish hatred. And Jews like to use the term because they're well aware of that history and they don't want to see it repeated. So it's an oxymoron and everyone... Okay, so the one who teach hate against the Jews, and he is a Nazi and he's a fascist, he is an oxymoron. But we know that Jesus in the cross, he says, forgive them, Father, they do not know what they are doing. So when you say you're idiot, you speak about Christian Judo values, Anyone who teach hatred is not practicing 
the teaching of Christ. Same time, if we go and do a little search, will take you not even a minute to find that the biggest brigade who do commit the Holocaust, or the Holocaust, whatever they call it, was Muslims. Muslims in the army of Hitler from Albania and Al Bosnia and Turkey and Arabia. They were in the front line to capture the Jews and to slaughter them. But when the Muhammadan they want to talk about what happened to the Jews, suddenly the Muhammadan they are the one who loved the Jews. And soon we will go and see the oxymoron Muhammad who slaughtered every single Jew in Arabia. Is this is your book? Let us show you. Hold on, give me a second, please. So what those people do, I notice this guy, he dodged the question and he throw it back at you, you know. But he will not acknowledge that if he is against Nazi and fascism, that Islam is nothing but a fascist Nazi cult. Believe that the Muslims are supremacist to anyone else. Therefore, they have the right to inhalate and kill and destroy any other ethnic group because Muslims, they consider themselves one ethnic as a nation. Those are the Muslims. And the Imams, like Al Imam Al Husseini, he was the one in charge of, uh, let us say, recruiting as many Muslims as Hitler he need. But remember, it's an oxymoron to say Christian, Judaic, you know, uh, 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 civilization or value, because simply, who, who is the one who built the hatred against the Jews? So how you say? You have a value of a Christian Judas, you know. Obviously, you as a Christian Jew, Jew uh, you know, value does not exist. You know, simply you hate the Jews. You teach hatred against the Jews. So, when when we when we show them what they did, and why until now actually the pictures of Hitler, you go in the Middle East, you will find every single Muslim supporter of terrorists. He loved Hitler. Uh, I remember I used to see a bakery. A bakery, a Muslim bakery, and the Hitler picture is in the top next to his father. I don't know who is Hitler. I was a kid with his funny mustache, and it was funny that he have such a, such a flag. And those are Muslims. If you go right now, check you will see the uh, 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 the book. It's called Kifahi. Is printed only in the Middle East, sold legally in the Middle East, promoted in every Middle Eastern school. Read Kifahi, the organization of Hamas, the organization of Fatah. All of them, they give you a copy of Kifahi, which is the book of uh, Hitler for free. So, if this is what makes people oxymoron, let us check the oxymoron Muhammad. Shall we? This is your prophet teaching nothing but hatred against the Jews. And remember, the one who spread Nazist and fascist is an oxymoron. So we go to the Quran. The Quran called the Jews pigs, monkeys, the worst of the creatures, the, the most enemy hatred to, to the Muslims. I will type the word adawa only, which means enmity. See, I did not even type the word Jews. Adawa. What does this have to do with the Jews? Right away you will see. Enmity means Jews. Immediately. So you are talking about the Western in Europe, they are teaching enmity to the Jews when all your religion is based on enmity to the Jews, the Christians, the Hindus, the Buddhists, anyone is the Muslim is an enemy of Allah, we have to kill him. It says here, as an example, look, look at the culture of Muhammad, the oxymoron Muhammad, claiming that his God, he promotes hatred between the Christians until the day of judgment. Now, this guy, he is saying that an oxymoron only is the one who will believe that the Judeo-Christian value is good. Why? Because they are teaching hate against the Jews. 
But this is the God of Islam teaching here specifically hated against the Christians. Why? Because they refused to follow Muhammad. As simple as that. In fact, the Christian, the stupid Christians, I say, at that time, they gave Muhammad refugee. In fact, the stupid Jews at that time, I have to say, they gave Muhammad refugee. Muhammad, he seek refugee twice in his life. One, once to Ethiopia, and the Christian king, the stupid donkey Christian king, he welcomed him. And second time, he went to Yathrib, which is a city occupied by the Jews, built by the Jews, and those stupid Jews, they welcomed him, and later he killed them all. So, this is what happened when you invite a terrorist to your town. First, he kick your, you know, kiss your shoes to take a visa. He kissed your ass to have papers. He crossed the sea to live there. And after you give him papers and etc., now he have rights. And now he starts spitting at you. Free food, free uh, school, free etc. And you kuffar, this dirty, disgusting. Now let us go and see what the Quran says about the Jews. The Quran says the same about the Jews. The Jews says that Allah, he says that the Jews are the enemy of Islam until the day of judgment. And he spread hatred between them until that day. Chapter 5, verse number 64. But remember, the one who is an exomoron moron is the one who spread hatred against the Jews. Here, not only they spread hatred against the Jews, Allah, he is saying he will spread hatred between the Jews. And for sure, Muslims have to hate the Jews and the Christians. In the same chapter, verse number 51, it says, Take not Christians and Jews as friends. Do you see it? So the oxymoron is the one who teach fascism. What does that mean? That means Muslims can be friends to each other only. Why? Because they are the best nation in the world. Other nations are dirty, filthy scumbags. If we go in the hadith, which is nothing but the poo-poo of Muhammad, peace be, police be upon him, he said that the Muslim, they should bring anyone who is not a Muslim, like a dog, and put a chain around his neck. Why? Because Muslims are the best nation on the world. But remember, fascism and Nazism is an oxymoron. But is it this is what fascism believe? You are the best of people ever raised up for the benefit between two brackets. You should look at look at this for the benefit of mankind. I mean, who, can you beat that? See, the Muslims they have a benefit for us for the benefit of mankind. Guys, I see only four hundred eighty-one. Honest to God, if we don't finish in the coming ten minutes. And we have 1,000. I'm leaving. Shame on you. I designate my day, my life, to come here to do my best. Five hundred people. Is that because I'm spending my day every day with you? Shall I take a vacation for the coming month? They are busy with the chat. Nobody even care what I'm talking about. So let me disable the chat. Shit chat people. Where is the chat to disable it? Let me see. Now I will feel better. No chat. This is why Muslims, they can fool your kids because most of you are a shit, chat, shit people. You come here only for entertainment. We continue. You are the best of the people ever raised up for the benefit of mankind. So Muslims, they are superior, Nazist, fascist, 
Hitler. They believe that they are the best nation. And now what does that mean? Maybe they will make some uh, medicine for us. Maybe they will give a charity. This is what it means to be the benefit, the benefit of, uh, for mankind. No. The best for mankind are those who bring them with a chain around their necks till they embrace Islam. Do you see it? And the purpose is noble. It's to save you to go to heaven. That's all. So this idiot, he is talking about how bad the Western culture, and he is the most evil, disgusting creature following the most disgusting hatred, Nazis, fascist, Mussolini, Prophet Muhammad. This filthy he forgot that when Hitler was killing Jews, the one who fought Hitler was the Christians. Not a single Muslim fought Hitler. In fact, it is the opposite as we showed you in the pictures. So those potatoes, they, they have a voice only if the listener is an idiot, uneducated, stupid, gullible. History is there. But who these days go and see and check history? People go to TikTok. How we can learn about Hitler from TikTok? How we can learn about history of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, from TikTok? Nobody read the books. Nobody see the books. Nobody want to understand the books. Because books is not what we are looking for. They praise Hitler. Now we continue. So the point number one about the oxymoron, it is you. Because, you know, actually they ask him a question, you know, about because this guy keep talking against the West, against the West, against the West. And by the way, there's many things in the West I don't like. Me, myself. Who said everything in the West is, you know. I mean, we have a lot of stupid people in the West and our proof is you. Aren't you from the West? Aren't you donkey yourself from the West? This is the West. This potato, he went to the Middle East, he went to Egypt, he went to Dubai. Where the area you felt unsafe, it is there. Aren't you, aren't you the one being arrested in, in Dubai? Why? How come nobody arresting you in USA? So he complained about the fascism. It's, the fascism is there. If you don't agree with them, they kill you. And the only reason for you to be released is because you're an American. Your American passport, the Western passport, protected you. Otherwise, you will be in jail until the coming century if they did not kill you. So, they complain about the West, but they die to get the passport of the West. Why you don't go and live between Taliban? Actually, they ask him such a question. Why you don't? Let us see the video. Why you don't go and live between Taliban? Maybe he have an answer. I guess he does. Let us see. Uh, I'm trying to find the video about Taliban. Give me a second. Oh, here. The catastrophe. That here they ask him about Taliban. Why you don't go and live under Taliban? So, you know, this guy, he have an answer for this. Very easy, simple. Let us see the answer. The answer is impressive. And you will notice that those people, they never answer a question. All of them, they share the same thing. All of them. So why you don't live under Taliban? I'm not going to play the whole video. You can watch it yourself. It says, why don't, don't you go and live under oppressive Taliban? 
This is the, this is the title. So here the person, this person, he will answer why. Did he answer? No. That you unleashed on that country for 20 years is going to improve schools for girls in most of the, I mean, Western narratives are typically incredibly hostile towards context because propaganda is hostile towards context. Context undermines simplification. It shows the subject from too many angles and narratives only want one angle to be shown. It's like that story about the blind men and the elephant, you know, each one of them holding a different part of the elephant and describing a different animal, how they thought it looked. Mainstream uh, discourse wants everyone to think that an elephant is the shape of a tree trunk or a snake. They never want you to see the whole picture. So what we know from their own statements is that the Taliban has closed uh, schools for girls in most of the provinces in Afghanistan. So when you already have the villain narrative in your head, Something like this just serves as a confirmation that the Taliban is, you know, op uh, oppressive and evil. Never mind that education in Afghanistan has been run under the auspices of American NGOs and American programs for the last 20 years. They're teaching a curriculum that many Americans themselves don't want in their schools. And because of that type of curriculum, many Americans take their kids out of schools and teach them at home instead. So it could be argued uh, that the Taliban is not prohibiting education for girls, but miseducation for girls. They have said. <laughs> here you see how as i said they never answer a question they say to you why you don't go and live and the taliban who was who, who, who are you a girl now did they ask you to solve the problem of education in, in, in afghanistan they ask you why you don't go and live under taliban he dodged the question he throw it under the table because the one is doing the interview obviously taking his side yeah, shouldn't you wonder? Listen, we ask you, we ask you about why you don't go live there. What does this have to do with the question? What does this have to do with the question? Secondly, look what this donkey he said. He said the American, they are teaching their own books in Afghanistan. If you go right now and check what the stupid American they were doing, they were printing Quran to the stupid people of Afghanistan. They have mosque in the school. The teacher are of Afghani. The minister of education is from Afghanistan. And this donkey he is saying that, okay, well, they forbid the school. This is what they say to you for girls. But they don't tell you that the reason is, uh, you know, they were teaching the American books. Okay, who is holding you to have your books? He said, maybe now they are preparing to print new books. We will see. Said that uh, once they get the curriculum cleaned up, schools will open up again. Oh, see? But this donkey, he forgot that it's forbidden for Taliban children to go to school if they are girls. This is long before Americans went there. Same time, Abdul, aren't you a Muslim and you have Sharia law and your education is ready? I thought you are an ancient civilization. What do you mean we need to prepare the books? What about bringing the books of Pakistan? Aren't they in Pakistan teaching the moral of Islam in Pakistan? Huh? Do you see how they dodge the question and how they run away from the embarrassment? Now, if you are a stupid person who don't see reality, reality is that this is a very filthy society where women treat it like dogs. As she said, Teach them how to make clothing and jail them in their rooms. And what? And jail them in their rooms. But nobody can jail Aisha, by the way. Aisha, she was a whore. She used to decorate women to do prostitution for fun. So they bring her young youth to sleep with them. Now, we mention prostitution. So let us go to the second point. This guy, he mentioned prostitution too. Let me find the video. I mean, what a, what a story. I don't know. The one who mentioned your, your name to me, it's not your lucky day. What an idiot. Let us see. Where is the video of our prostitution? Maybe this one. I don't know. Let us see. To one degree or another, responsible for the coup in the first place. Let us see. No, not this one. Hold on. This one had Billy dancing of him. 
Maybe this one, let us see. Achieve and enforce, then it isn't a natural state, is it? If it was an obvious accepted fact, to another man who's stronger than me, who's smarter than me, I'm not equal to him in strength, and I'm not... I'm just trying to find the video, guys, just hold on with me. Uh, where is the video? Yeah, I saw his video, but I cannot find it right now. So let me search. I think it was in his uh, Twitter. All right. Ah, hold on. So here, this is a video of him speaking about slavery. About what? About slavery. One of the first things many Western think of as a proof of their moral credibility is the abolition of slavery, and Muslims feel awkward and blameworthy on this issue. This is the opposite of how both sides should feel. Let us hear. He have something to say. Can we listen? Let us go for it. What's one of the big moral claims of the West? The abolition of slavery, right? They say, we abolish slavery while you Muslims still have slavery in your laws until today. Okay, let's be honest. In reality, there are more slaves today than there ever have been. Why? Because power in the U.S. and Europe and elsewhere in the West, throughout the West, power never makes a decision for uh, moral reasons, but only for financial reasons. Now, those financial reasons may coincide with moral reasons, but that's accidental. And that's the case with slavery. When the moral reasons coincide with the financial reasons, then that just gives you a moral rationale uh, for what is actually a, stri a strictly financial decision. Make it look like you're altruistic, but nothing could be further from the truth. The Emancipation Proclamation took place during the Civil War, not before it. It didn't cause the Civil War. It was just an economic weapon by the North against the South uh, during the war. That wasn't a morally driven decision, but it allowed them to package their cause as a moral one, and they've been packaging it like that ever since. Because the truth of the matter is, you didn't abolish slavery, you deregulated it. You know, some historians estimate that up to as much as 90% of the profits that were generated from slave labor ended up being spent on the slaves themselves, on some plantations, not all of them, but some. You see, uh, you notice here that the question is, the topic is a slavery. Until now, he is saying what? Oh, you do not free slaves. Oh, you do not do this. You do not do this. Well, I, you know, you see here the stupidity is beyond imagination. So, if you want to say that the capitalism is making people a slave, well, always there is somebody rich and somebody poor, and the poor work for the rich. Slavery is something different. Slavery is you being forced to work for somebody. You cannot even choose the job. You cannot even quit. You are born as a slave. Your mother is a slave. She gave birth to you. You are a slave too. So they dodged the question. And now he is saying, let us blame the West. So that, based on what you said, you yourself, you are a slave. Because there is a superpower for capitalists. They are forcing you to say what you are saying. And maybe you are working for them. Isn't it everybody is a slave today? 
So either we have a freedom of speech, which means we are not slave of anyone, because I cannot speak against my master. Are you speaking against the master now? So they run away from the question and they never answer you for what you are looking for. Let us see, maybe he will say something useful because I remember I saw a video of him speaking about prostitution. I'm not sure if this is the one. Their clothing, their medical care, and so on, because it was in the interest of slave owners to maintain uh, a slave's physical well being to one extent or another. Because it was expensive to buy a slave, it was expensive to keep a slave. But you don't have to spend any of that money uh, on a wage slave. You don't have to buy their food, you don't have to buy their clothing, you don't have to pay for their health care, you don't have to pay for their accommodation, and so on. Here you notice how he make you feel guilty. You don't need to buy him. He is giving him salary, you donkey. So now he is saying, because he's a Muslim, he feed his slave, that is better. But what do you feed him? You feed the food of a dog. Where he sleep? He sleep like a dog. Do he even choose where to sleep? Do he even choose when to sleep? Do he work eight hours and go home? So the question is about slavery. And the answer is, you Western are the one who practices slavery until now. What about sex with the slave? <laughs> what about beating the slave? What about having sex with the child of the slave? What about telling the children of the slave? What about, I mean, look how, look how silly. This is the guy, I mean, the lady, he, she sent me his name. I'm not sure how she see that this person is having influence. I mean, this is an idiot. He don't make sense for two seconds in what he say. Then you have to be an idiot to consider what he say as something serious. If we ask him himself, okay, which one you prefer yourself? To be a slave of a Muslim or working and you have your tie and your t-shirt clean? <laughs> you must be a slave of the West too because you live in the West. And as I know, you are born there too, right? So they have full control of you. Man, we have no life. In the same time, if we go to Mauritania, if we go to Niger, if we go to all this time, until now they have slaves in Saudi Arabia, slaves in, in, in Emirat, six slaves, not only slaves to be owned. So the question will never be answered. It's just a speech after a speech. Let me uh, 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 for you know, like forward a little bit because he will keep blogging the same thing. It was a genius move. And then, of course, you went around the world on your so-called moral crusade to abolish or to deregulate slavery everywhere, as if anyone in the world had been as savage as you in the practice of slavery. Well, let us talk about savage as you. I challenge this Abdul to call me if he dare, to see how Muhammad, he treated his slaves. Shall we? Actually, you know what? Let me see. There is a video. I need to find it. I will search again. Hold on. Uh, I forgot really what was the name of the video. So I need to... Uh, let me check. Maybe I can find it in my history. Of a browsing. Give me a second. See, without chat is better. People leave even better. You know, I don't want them. They are coming here for chat. We want people who they are serious to stay. Chit chat people are not welcome. I don't want them. I don't care for them. Um, let us see history. Oh, history, history. All right, history.
I'm just trying to find. Give me a second. Yeah, the history doesn't show me an individual link. What is this one here? <laughs> supremacist, of course. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's not a thing wrong with that. You're a Western supremacist. You believe in the supremacy of your values. You believe in the supremacy of your belief system. You see, I'm just trying to find which video is the one. Give me a, a minute, guys. Which one? The one is speaking of this topic. Maybe this one. Uh, slavery, Islam, and the West. The West actually had just de All right. I think maybe this is the one. So let us uh, take this one away. And we go to this one. So listen carefully. Mr. Uh, Booz is going to explain to you what nobody can explain to you. And this is why he is a Muslim. Let me be sure that the video is coming clear. All right. Give me a second. Um, all right. So now we will hear Mr. Uh, uh, Shaheed. By the way, your name is Shaheed. You're still alive. Obviously, you do not know what Shahid mean anyway. So uh, tell us more. Tell us. Go ahead. Regulated slavery. So someone commented, and I was waiting for this. I knew this was going to come. Uh -huh. Talking about sex slavery. Talking about concubinage. Okay. With obviously, the implication that it's an immoral thing in Islam, and it shows the uh, you know moral inferiority of Islam and the Islamic system. So I wanted to respond to that. So this man says, or asks, in Islam, can women be purchased in the markets, in the slave markets, for the purpose of serving as concubines? Uh, and the purchaser has the intention uh, of taking her to his home, sleeping with her, treating her as he has in quotes, humanely, meaning sarcastically. Uh, and then he has the intention to take her back in the market after, say, 15 months and selling her again. See, this is the type of comment that is absolutely perfect for illustrating uh, the extent to which Westerners actually think that their concealment of reality, that their hypocrisy, that that's supposed to actually be somehow convincing to the rest of the world. The fact of the matter is that they can actually be in the gutter and claim the moral high ground. And they think that we're supposed to just believe them. And the tragic thing, because without this, it wouldn't be tragic, it would just be evil. But the tragic part about this is that there are actually many of them, many people in the West, who have such a devastating degree of cognitive dissonance that they themselves genuinely believe that the gutter is the moral high ground. That's how propagandized they are. That's how indoctrinated they are. The West created virtual reality goggles for their society long before they ever had the technology to do it. They just did it with propaganda. For anyone in the West to take a holier than thou uh, position or attitude or tone with regards to the legality of concubinage in Islam is like someone who's covered head to toe in filth, expressing disgust uh, at someone who doesn't use hand sanitizer. I'm telling you, you can only think that we are ugly because you've never looked in the mirror. So look at yourself, look at your societies. You have legal prostitution across Europe. So you think that what? 15 months of concubinage is immoral, but 15 minutes of sex for money is moral. Well, I mean, you legalized it, so you must think it's fine. 15 months as a concubine, or a year, or three years, or a lifetime as a concubine, with one man, with legislated rights and protections, with legislated privileges versus 5, 10, 15, 20 different men a day with no rights. Uh, the extent to which Westerners actually think that their concealment of reality, that their hypocrisy, that that's supposed to actually be somehow convincing to the rest of the world. The fact of the matter is that they can actually be in the gutter and claim the moral high ground. And they think that we're supposed to just 
believe them. And the tragic thing, because without this, it wouldn't be tragic, it would just be evil. But the tragic part about this is that there are actually many of them, many people in the West, who have such a devastating degree of cognitive dissonance that they themselves genuinely believe that the gutter is the moral high ground. That's how propagandized they are. That's how indoctrinated they are. The West created virtual reality goggles for their society long before they ever had the technology to do it. They just did it with propaganda. For anyone in the West to take a holier-than-thou uh, position or attitude or tone with regards to the legality of concubinage in Islam is like someone who's covered head to toe in filth, expressing disgust uh, at someone who doesn't use hand sanitizer. I'm telling you, you can only think that we are ugly because you've never looked in the mirror. So look at yourself. Look at your societies. You have legal prostitution across Europe. So you think that what? 15 months of concubinage is immoral, but 15 minutes of sex for money is moral. Well, I mean, you legalized. Just to show you how a filthy scumbag this person is. You do not know that in his Quran, it's a permitted to have pimp business in Islam. So now he is attacking the West for legalizing prostitution, which me, myself, I oppose as a Christian. However, uh, some countries, they do that. But isn't it already legalized in your religion 1,400 years ago, you idiot? So he is saying, which one is better? Having sex with a slave or what by one man? Or a woman, she is having sex with a 20. But the difference is a huge. First, the first woman, she is being forced to have sex with the man. The other woman, she decides to be a whore. <laughs> and she got paid for it. The poor slave, she is being raped, if, excuse me, and she is just after that, she go clean the dishes, and she do laundry, and she clean the floor. At night, he come back, he if her again, and not only that, the Muslim, they share their slaves. There is something called Isya'aratul Furuj which means an exchange, exchange of a vagina. Exchange of vagina. So he is talking about how, how nice it is in Islam to be a slave and being ift. Yes, the Muslim man will if you. Which one is better? To be ift by 20 men or to be ift by one man? Hmm. See? And the guy who asked him the question, so I can if the women and send her back to sell her after I if her, he's saying, what is, what is better? If we go in the Quran, just to show you why we laugh at Islam and Muslims together, we will find this. The Quran say clearly, prostitution is legal, especially if women agree to do it. I will type the word prostitution. Huh? Bingo. Chapter 24, verse number 33. Force not your girls to do prostitution if they choose a chastity, and if you force them, is Allah is all merciful. And this is telling you that this person, obviously, he is just interested in attention and political talk, but he never know his religion because if he knew his religion, he would never speak against prostitution and legalizing prostitution because it's legalized in the Quran. If Listen, listen carefully. I'm not making things up in front of you. Those are slaves. Force not your maids into slavery, into, sorry, into prostitution, if they desire chastity. So what is the condition? If they desire chastity, don't force them. However, if you force them, Allah is all merciful. And this is a story about a guy, his name is Ibn Salul. He have his slaves, he, you know, he asked her to go sleep with men, and she got paid. Muhammad did not dare to say to him, stop. And he did not dare to make prostitution forbidden. Muhammad, he had to come with a solution, because the wives, they start complaining. The husbands, they go sleep with those slaves, and their money is gone. So Muhammad, he had to come with a solution, as usual, Jibreel is ready in the shelf. Hey, Jibreel, give me a solution. Muhammad, okay, you don't dare to fight with uh, Ibn Salul, who is a very powerful person between the people you, they follow you. You cannot even offend him. So I will give you a solution. 
Here we go. Allah gave me a verse says, Force not your mate for prostitution if they choose chastity. So if they choose a chastity, eh, it's okay. If they don't, force them not. And if you force them, Allah is all merciful. So Muhammad, he did not do any solution because he is a hypocrite man. Instead, he legalized prostitution and now any Muslim, he have a slave, he can make her do work for him by opening her legs. And you will notice not a single law in Islam says, if you force your slave into prostitution, you will be punished. Never. In fact, we can open the book of uh, 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 Musnad Malik and you will see there's a book about slavery, the whole book, about how to touch her vagina, how to touch her legs, what is the consequence of a man he want to buy a woman by touching her belly or her stomach? Shall he buy it because he spoiled the product or he should not buy it? Go and read. So this idiot, he is speaking about which one is better instead of saying both are ugly. <laughs> you know what I mean? And instead of saying both is ugly, he is saying which one is better? Do you see how awkward those potatoes donkeys are? And then the supporter of such a speech, because he isn't awkward like this guy, he is low IQ, he said, wow, that's a great answer. Which one is better, huh? Legalizing prostitution or one man effing this poor slave? For sure one man. If you notice, that women who work for Android tits, they made a lot of money. A lot of money. He got rich too. But women who work for a Muslim as a slave, they get effed and get no paid. So they have no future. They will live, they will die as a slaves. The man can exchange them. The man can sell them. The man can rent them. In fact, we know all of us that Muslim, they have something called muta. Muta is nothing but a rental where a man, he can rent a woman. Now this guy, he will say to you, this is Shia. In fact, this has nothing to do with Shia, neither Sunni. This is Islamic teaching. It's in the Quran. If you search for rental in this page here, you will see right away that the Muslims agree that muta is nothing but form of rental where a man, he rent a woman for the purpose of using his vagina, her vagina. Uh, uh, this is the story of Harut and Marut. Hold on. Harut and Marut. <laughs> uh, so do you see they school you about morality and which one is better? This guy, he just keep talking against the West, against the West. But if he cannot live outside the West for a minute, they will arrest him. They will torture him. They will kill him if he live in the Middle East. Because simply his mouth is always open. He keep talking. You cannot do that in the Middle East. So one of the privileges you have, you idiot, in the West, that you can speak against the West. In Islamic countries, do you even dare to speak against your ruler? We will go there. Here you will see, this is the rule of the muta. <laughs> in some work, special term applied to women who participate in the muta. Musta'ajara. Musta'ajara in Arabic means rental. Or rented women. Alright? So, he was speaking about prostitution when Islam simply legalized prostitution and gave it a different name. Those are not slaves. Those are free women. They are free women. They are white Arab women. And they are practicing prostitution by renting their vagina to the man to F them. In some work, special term applied to women who participate in muta musta'ajra or rented women, muta is considered as a kind of rental because general main, man, uh, main, uh, uh, man's uh, basic aim is this in this kind of marriage they call it marriage you see <laughs> this is marriage <laughs> is sexual enjoyment of a woman and in return of his enjoyment the woman she receives certain amount of money or property now how many muta women she can do in her lifetime billions millions no limit the first man is done the second man is go 
next, 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 and you pay. And not only that, he said that the women, the slave here, she have a right. What right? I mean, she's a slave, you stupid idiot. The right to be effed, the right to be beaten, the right to be raped, the right to lose her freedom as a human. And now we will see that even the free Muslim woman, she is a whore. Muhammad, he made every single Muslim woman practice his Quran a whore. Because a Muslim woman who have decency, she have to follow the decency of Muhammad. And the decency of Muhammad is to be a whore. You rent a woman for five minutes. You have actually to tell her in this muta for how long you are going to F her. If you say five minutes, when the five minute is up, the effing business is up. You have to tell her how much you will pay her before you start effing. She agree, you agree, you are good to go. You have to do it in person. You speak to the women, you offer her the money, the women she accept, you are good to go. Those are the pillars of the muta, imagine. They have even pillars for it, the same as pillars for Islam. The time and period mudda, which means you tell the women, I want to if you for 15 minutes. If she say no 10, then you have to negotiate. See, they don't force them, brother. Freedom, freedom. So the women, she have to agree with the term and the condition which you are offering. If you say two hours, hmm? read with me, I'm not even making things up in front of you. Uh, he asked if it's possible to conclude the contact of muta for one or two hours. He replied, no time limit. <laughs> From one or two hours. <laughs> and they call it marriage. <laughs> so you see the hypocrisy is attacking the West. Oh, hold on. He was defending Taliban. Uh, what, what about you? What do you think about Taliban doing Bachabazi? As long as you are talking about the American, they are teaching the, 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 uh, uh, the Afghani bad stuff, brother, bad stuff. What they were teaching them, Bachabazi? Huh? Were Taliban leaders. They bring a child and they force him to dress like a girl and they put makeup on his eyes and make him a skirt, they were in a skirt. And that is supposedly the country who you defend says they are, you know, you know, the, the Taliban, you know, they are good people. Taliban, what's wrong with people? You, you have a wrong understanding. You have a propaganda. But Shabazi, let me search for it. You can search for it too. There is actually long documentary by the approval of Taliban. Imagine they are not even ashamed of it. And this is very popular in many Islamic countries, specifically, most likely, in countries like uh, Afghanistan, Taliban, uh, rule, uh, Pakistan, all the religious, you know. And those are leaders. Those are not. They have interview with leaders. Boys. And then after they dance for them, they F the boys. They have no shame. This is a boy. They dress him like a girl. And look at the Taliban, brother. Do you see the Taliban? Under the protection of Allah. And those boys are trained to entertain men. And then the men, they will have sex with them. What they will not tell you, that Islamic society is very obsessed with sex. Sex with men, sex with the children, sex with boys. Ah, and this guy, he mentioned to the age of Aisha. And he mentioned the age of the children's marriage of, of the children is in USA. He said in USA there is 500,000 uh, uh, child marriage, which is, you know, number is not really accurate. Because they consider child marriage anyone is under the age of 18 but it can be someone is 17 it can be 16 it can be 15 it can be 14 but you will not find somebody marrying five years old girl look at this i mean this is disgusting sorry guys i forgot the video running i apologize
I was looking for the video of Homi speaking about Aisha age. Ah, and this guy, but let me see if I can find his video about Aisha before we go. Uh, I mean, what I will say, I mean, there is endless stories about this person. This person is a joke. Uh, Here we go. The marriage of Hajj. Marriage, because you still have child marriage throughout the, uh, the Western world, the same as everywhere else. I mean, child marriage is legal in almost half of the uh, states in America. In some states, you need parental uh, consent. And in some states, there's not even a minimum age. It's the same in Europe. So you don't want adults and minors to fornicate with each other, but it's okay if they marry each other. That's your position. I mean, there's been about a half a million marriages between adults and minors in the United States. You see, what he don't tell you, that when they say minor marriages, they are not talking about someone is five years old. <laughs> you know, in the West, if we go and check how many cases of rape, you will find that if a man, he took his wife to bed and she is his wife, and he forced her into sex, she make a case against him, case of rape. She's a wife. That is a rape. In Islamic world, who dare even, who is the woman who dare to say that? Because simply, his right to rape her. She's his wife, she's lawful, or even his slave. And he mentioned that, you can have sex with a slave, you rape the slave. So those cowards, they count for you, they say, they go on Google, it says, okay, there is, I saw in Google, it says 300,000 minor marriage. But doesn't say you marry five years old kid. Aisha, she was five years old in your calendar. Sorry, our calendar, six years old in your calendar. So you are defending Aisha. What am, you know, this is called bidophile. This is not a child marriage. There's a huge difference between a child marriage, because usually it happens between the children, like both are under age. He is 17, she is 16, he is 15, she is 14. But your prophet is 54 years old. That is a pedophile, that is a mental illness. When a man desires a child, she cannot perform sex. If we go to the books of Hadith, we will find the following. Your prophet, not to mention Bachabazi, as you see, you see how decent they are? You know, they are against child marriage. They, they are effing boys. They are effing boys legally in Afghanistan, brother. If we go and we check, we will find the following. How big the body of Aisha? Let us say she was maybe five, but she was big. Maybe. You never know. No. The hadith expose Muhammad, she was so little to the point her mother, she was forcing her to eat food to gain weight so she can be ifed. Let us see. Uh huh. Where is the hadith? Ah, here we go. And this is Sahih. What they will say to you, Da'if, brother, is Da'if. And this is Da'if. It is Sahih. Here we go. It's in front of you. Sahih. All right? My mother, Aisha, she said, intend, intended to make me gain weight to send me to the house of the Messenger of Allah. But nothing which she desired benefited me. Until she gave me cucumber, looked like a cucumber was working fine with Aisha. I don't know why. Mmm, dangerous. And she, you know, she gave me cucumber with the fresh dates I, to eat. Then I gained such a weight as she desired. So, is Aisha physically fit to, for sex? No. Mentally fit for sex? No. Do even she knew what sex is? 
the girl she is six years old in your calendar five years old in our calendar so when we talk about child marriage we're not talking about two children getting married we are talking about a pervert he is 54 years old desiring a child she is six years old in your calendar that is nothing but but the file that's not marriage when we say marriage we talk about a man marrying a woman jesus said that the man leave his parents and will be united with his women women not a child so the prophet married her when she was six years old and he did intercourse which means from six to nine he was putting his dude between her legs he did not do intercourse because she cannot handle it she would die and the muslims agree there's no limit for the age shia and sunni agree actually al khomeini he's a shia and the, and the sunni they say the same that you can even enjoy have sexual relationship with infant muhammad himself he asked for the hand of one of his wives supposedly when she was an infant she was just born So they try to cover up what is a shame by saying, oh, you are doing that. And let us say for the sake of argument, there is a filthy people doing that. That will not change the fact that you are filthy too. Is it a bad argument to say that because you are a homo, I can be a homo? Is that a right argument to say because you are a pervert, so I can be a pervert? Is that the right argument to say because you beat your wife, I beat my wife? The Quran legalized beating women, raping women, raping boys. In fact, I can show you a reference that you can have sex with your daughter. Not to forget that Muhammad himself, he took his own son wife and how he took it. You go and open Al-Qurtubi, Al-Tabari, any book you want. You will find Muhammad, he go to his own son wife when the husband was out. And then what he do with her? He do flirt with the women. According to the Muslims, he said to her, Subhanallah, Mu'allif uh, 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 al-Qulub, praise be to Allah, the one who flipped my heart for you. Flirting with married women is the morality of Muhammad. And later he forced that son to give his wife to her. In the same book, Al-Qurtubi, it says, the privilege of the Prophet, number 10, if the eyes of the Prophet fall into a woman, her husband must divorce her so the Prophet can F her. Maybe Christian Prince is lying. Christian Prince, do you have a proof? <laughs> you see, they are, they are, they are, he is a school in the West. He's a school in the West about, like, you West, you disgusting disgust people. You, you, you want to see morality? Come see Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. In fact, he have a video of him comparing between Muhammad and Andrew Tate. Shall I play it? Okay. <laughs> Here, this is the official government website of the Kingdom of Jordan. And now don't tell me you don't accept it. People will laugh at you. Hmm? So here you will see the privilege of Muhammad. All the privilege is either about sex and money. Sex and money. Sex and money. But let us go to privilege number 10. Where is the privilege number 10? Number 6, number 10. Uh, number 10 here. Okay, hold, hold on. Maybe not number 10. Let us see. Uh, here we go let me use google translation if you don't mind it says here number 10 is a waqa not basarahu ala imra'a wajaba ala zawjaha talaquha wa halla lahu nikahuha so if if uh, if his eyes fall into a woman her husband must divorce her immediately so the prophet can f her so 
you are talking about slavery. Are you free in Islam? What is the Prophet like your wife? What if the Prophet, he saw your wife? You have to give your wife to Muhammad so he can F her in front of your eyes. And this guy was talking about right and the right in Islam and etc. But look, this is Muhammad. If his eyes, read carefully, this is Google Translation. If his eyes falls on a woman, her husband must divorce her and she is lawful for him to F her, not to marry her. Must. You see the word must? Hey, potato, Abdul, do you see the word must? This is must, not master, mustard. This is not ketchup. It's a must. You have to give your wife to the scumbag Muhammad because he is a prophet, brother. And as long as he is a prophet, will you have to make his penis happy? Are you against the will of Allah to make your wife in the bed of Muhammad because he like her? Sure not. Is that the Western civilization teaching that is Joe Biden, he saw your wife, you have to divorce her so you, he can F her? So he's complaining about the Western civilization when he is a scumbag, following a scumbag, his name is Muhammad. And then this guy, he have some, uh, you know, uh, uh, videos about uh, 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 one video about Andrew Tate uh, give me a second obviously he is jealous from Andrew Tate but he forgot you know he, I don't know like I mean it's 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 very funny uh, All right. Look what he said about Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate's peace be upon him. He is upsetting this guy. Okay, why? Hold on. Let us see. Room or the car that they're in is filling up with water. I've seen this in so many movies. Well, that's the predicament that Andrew Tate's fans are in right now with every successive leak of evidence from the Romanian prosecutor's office. They have attached themselves to this guy and it's gonna be hard to pry themselves loose to avoid drowning in the reality that they've been had. Tate used the so-called lover boy method to lure women to Romania under the pretense of starting a serious relationship with them or even marrying them only to then trap them into doing webcam porn for him in a strange country with no passports, no contacts, using threats, violence, and psychological abuse to keep them compliant. And he's basically used that same lover boy strategy. But remember, he is the one who said, which one is better? Slave? He said the slave is better. Those women, nobody touched them. They are web cameras. They are hookers, yes. But they are web camera, nobody touch them. Nobody F them. Nobody even have any sexual contact with them. It's just a camera, internet. Except him for sure, maybe his brother too. But look what this is saying. He's saying Andrew Tate is very bad. Because why? Because he controlled their mind. But isn't it your prophet is the one who says to you what to do? And you control your mind? In different video he said, people can find it. about the credibility of the West. You trust a politician to make a law for you because you don't know how to think, because you do not know how to decide. You want somebody to decide for you. But isn't it, this is you, Muslim, what you do? Isn't it you, you follow what Muhammad say, even how to clean your ass? So Andrew Tate is a very filthy man, we have to agree. But isn't it what your prophet and the Quran allow them to do? To do muta? to hire women, to force women into prostitution? There is a video in YouTube in Hatun Tash, you will see three Muslims discussing the verse in the Quran, which the one I mentioned, about yes, you can do work as a pimp. It's legal. Now speaking of the lover boy method, if we ask this guy, why Muhammad he have all those women? 
he was a lover boy they would say to you Muhammad he married women so he can establish himself as a prophet but this is the whole idea Andrew Tate he want to get a benefit from those women you are saying to me the same Muhammad he don't care for those women he just want to use them to reach a position isn't it this is the lover boy method using women for a target have nothing to do with being having a family does it make a difference really if he married them or not he can divorce him second day so Andrew Tate Muhammad he married Aisha because she is daughter of Abu Bakr he married the daughter of Omar he married the daughter of everybody is important all the men around him who they are important he married their daughters why so he can strengthen himself by the strong men of Quraysh so now he is their son-in-law so Muhammad is doing the lover boy politics I if your daughter she is my wife I promise you later you will become a caliphate and this is exactly what happened Abu Bakr became a caliphate Omar became a caliphate Uthman became a caliphate etc so he if their daughters he is the son of law he got their full support now and now he is the prophet it doesn't matter what he do we support you because if we don't support you we don't support our daughter so Andrew Tate he do practice abusing women using women for his agenda Muhammad he do the same it's exactly the same I don't want to keep you longer because obviously you guys are bored so uh, I want to I, I have to finish here uh, otherwise this guy is just an idiot you know he's not worth really my time and I find it very embarrassing actually for me to speak about such a low-class person who keep attacking the West but he will never dare to go and live in the Middle East or any Islamic countries in the Middle East if you speak one word of what you say you will be dead so if you are honest for a second you should appreciate that you live in the West where you can attack the West and you are not arrested Muhammad he made it clear that if a man he attack his ruler by insulting him or speaking against him the ruler even if he is unjust he have the right to whip your back let us show you the hadith even if the emir which means the ruler is filthy, is unjust. You have to obey, even if he even even if he beat you, even if he whip you, even if he steal your money. This is what Muhammad said. Read it. Are we making things up? No, we have the reference, and this is Sahih. We can find it in Bukhari, in Muslim, etc. So he said he, here, you listen to Emir. By the way, doesn't say, just listen. He says, listen and obey. You see the translation is false. They took the word obey out. In Arabic it says, Tasma wa tutiya. You listen and you obey. Not carry out the orders. False translation very fast because there's a huge difference let us show you another version of the translation just to show you how Muslims even try to cover their shame their prophet is encouraging them to obey and just man filthy who is abusing them all those hadith here actually the same translation and actually even even with this one it says even if he flag your back and took your worth you listen and obey and this guy is speaking about the just and the unjust the unjust system in the west and the just system of subhanahu wa ta'ala allahu akbar and prophet muhammad do you see the just so the prophet if he see your wife he take her and he if her the caliphate, he can flog your back, snatch your wealth, stealing it, and you have to obey. 
and this guy is speaking about capitalism and the unjust and how the West are fake when his Islamic countries is a batch of bazi, raping children, no just to anyone, the most corrupt countries in the world. Listen carefully. Which country in Islamic countries is not corrupt? To the bones. Can you name one? Which countries in the Islamic world judges are not corrupt? Police. You can't trust anything there. The police are your enemy, not your protectors. So those people who, uh, uh, like th th their mouth is big and open, they themselves, they will not wish for a second to live in Islamic country. They want to live, enjoy freedom of speech in Western country, which they bite every day. But can they survive what they claim for one day there? No. This person, he will be, disappear. Actually, this is what happened to him. He went to Dubai. They arrested him right away. <laughs> he got involved supporting terrorists in Egypt, supporting terrorists in, in Afghanistan. But he don't dare to say, that he support violence. Actually, there's a video of him says, you will not find in my videos one time saying I support violence, which means he don't support us now. Because isn't it your prophet, he said, I've been victorious by terror. So are you against terror or with the, without with, with, with terror? Either you support Muhammad, which means you support terrorism. And Muhammad, he says, he is the first terrorist. How he was victorious? By terror. So are you against terror? That means you are against Islam. Isn't the Quran mentioned the word terror many times? This is Muhammad saying clearly that his victory had nothing to do with Allah. It was a pure terrorism. I have been helped by terror. When ISIS and Al-Qaeda and Muslim Brotherhood and every scumbag in the world quote terrorism act, they are quoting Muhammad. You will not see them quoting uh, James Bond. They are quoting Prophet Allah said so. Allah said so. So those people are not worthy really to listen to. But again, if you are a low IQ person who have no education, you are a gullible for anyone to fool you and fool you. And the world is full of those people. So people who they are uneducated, stupid, they will see this guy is smart. Oh, look, he is talking right. Look, we have a slavery. I work in Walmart. They pay me eight dollars. Who's forcing you? Don't work in Walmart. Own Walmart. Go. You think in Islamic countries, there's people don't work for Walmart? We just showed you that the emir can snatch even your money without just. And you can't even complain. You can't even go to court. Here's the court. <laughs> All those royal families, who is the one cleaning their dishes? If you go in Islamic countries, actually, it's the biggest collection of slavery in the world. They kidnap children from poor countries just to play in the camel. They want to win the race. They bring a little child. He is six years old. They put him in the top of the camel so they can win the race because the less weight you have in the top of the camel, the faster the camel can run. They bring children from Bangladesh, from Indonesia. They buy them. If we go right now and search for slavery in Mauritania and what they do for them for prostitution or Niger, Halal open pimping houses. When Boko Haram kidnap 300, 400 girls, what they do to them? When the Muslims in the Philippines, they kidnap women, what they do to them? So when this person compare between the West and the Muslims word, we have to say that the trash of the West is better than your profit. You see, when the, when the French and the English, they come to the Middle East, 
Maybe they come for their own power sake, for their money. They want to they want to take the wealth of those nations. But those nations, what wealth they have at that time? I don't, I'm not sure. But I know that the French and the British they build hospitals, they run trains, and they did print print. They be, the first time printing machines came to us and electricity. The Ottoman they rule our land for hundreds of years. They kidnap women. They cut our trees. They make our field empty from food. They even steal the chicken. They come to the, to the town. They take all the goats, all the sheep, all the people die, you know, that's it. And not only that, the young men, they ship them. They are even men, human beings, they ship them to go and fight for, for, for the Ottoman uh, Empire. And you never see your children again. Never ever you see them. So when they speak about occupation, always occupation is bad. But we have to be honest. We cannot compare between the occupation of the West and the occupation of the scumbag of Muhammad. If you go check in history, how many women been raped in Egypt when the British they came? How many women been raped in Syria and Lebanon, etc., when the French took over? How many women been raped by the Israeli army since they came into a charge of the Holy Land? And now we can ask the same for the Muhammadan. How many women Muslim they rape when they take over a town? I don't want to go back on time, just go on this year, last, last year, the year before it, the year before it, the year before it. So when they speak about morality, they are just a bunch of liars, no ethic. They brag about something they don't have. They brag about something they never had. I hope I gave you some conclusion about this idiot who is obviously just a talker. And you know, in these days, if you are a talker, you will have somebody who listen because a lot of people they are just an idiot they don't have a brain people are very shallow nobody want to use his brain nobody want to investigate what a person says anything i say to you go check it out don't you see anything i showed you about islam it's in the front of you on the screen i did not say things without reference and proof this guy is a talker Islam has civilization. Where is this civilization? We cannot find it. Women wear veil, actually. Do you know why, why the Muslims, they start forcing women to wear veil? Anyone knows? Who knows why Muslims, they wear women too? They force women to wear, to wear veil. Who can help me? Anyone can tell me? What is the reason? I, I'm not talking about Sauda now. Forget about Sauda. Omar al-Khattab, he was a spine at Sauda when she was doing popo. We know that. But the real reason for the veil to be spread in the time of Muhammad and the Caliphate after him. Anyone knows? The real reason is that when you see a woman wearing a veil, you don't rape her. She is a free woman. So free women only are allowed to wear a veil. A slave woman, she is a jariya. Jariya means she run in your in your in your in your lap. She is not allowed to cover herself. Omar al-Khattab, as an example, a woman she came to serve his guest, and she is a slave, and she cover herself. Omar al-Khattab, he did beat the hell of her. He said to her, "Are you trying?" to act like a free woman. So when women, they go in the street, if they are wearing a veil, that means she is a free Muslim woman. A woman, she is not wearing a veil, that means she is okay to F. That's all. And Omar make it clear that any slave woman, she decide to cover herself, should be punished. 
Let me see if I can find the reference in English, maybe. Hmm. This is Islam. We never say something without proof. Never. Uh, I have a hate in front of me, but I will see if I can find it in English. We cannot find it in English. Let us see then the front way. All right. Omar, he saw a woman wearing a veil. So he hit her. There is different hadith too speak about how they forced them even to serve food and their breast exposed, totally naked. Totally naked. No clothing. She go, serve fruit, food to his guest and her breast is bouncing. So Omar, and remember, the Muslim, they believe Omar is the most just person after Allah Prophet. And this is Sahih. This is what? This is Sahih. Let me make it. Let me zoom out. When he was speaking about slave, they have right. They don't even have the right to cover their hair or their body. They don't. Even such a thing, a woman, she tried to be decent. She have no right. Omar saw a female slave of ours who is wearing hijab or veil. So he hit her and said, don't imitate free women. Do you see it? Let me give you the link. Who is interested to see the link, to save the link? Maybe you are not. Mm. Actually, I can show you hadith. Uh, uh, even the even a, a slave woman, even if she is a Muslim, she should pray, and her breast is open so the master can enjoy it. She cover only from her belly bum down her vagina. Only. Let me shorten this link so I can post it for you. Now I know many people, they are just coming here for la la la. Nobody care, but for those who care to learn. All right. Let me know if the link work, please. And again, open the link with Google Translation. So you can get uh, ability to translate if you are using a computer. If the phone, usually, uh, the phone, if you are using Android, right away, it's open with Google Browser. So what do you think, people? Even covering herself, she have no right. We beat her because simply the veil was to protect the Muslim women who is free from being raped. A Muslim man, he see a woman in the street wearing no veil, that means she is available and she is okay to rape her.
she is not a protected species. The link here, by the way, it shows you many hadith about the same story. Hmm? You see all of those. He asked her, have you been set free? She said, no. He said, what about, uh, uh, you know, what, so what, are we, what are you wearing? Do you see it, people? Do you see it? A slave woman whom had introduced, this is translation, I'm just using it for you, Google translation. The link I gave you have all those things. Save them. Those are priceless. So he's asking her, why in the world you are wearing cover? Are you free now? Did they, did they free you? She said, no. So what, what are you doing? This is only for free women. Only. Free women of the believers. And then you, if you are a naive, you listen to this guy and he school you about the civilization and amazing law of God. And he said to you, why you want to listen to politicians who they are polluted? Do you need the polit polit political to tell you what the law you follow? Here we go, your prophet, he tell you, you beat your slave if she's wearing hijab. Your prophet tell you even how to, t how to wipe your ass, how to shake your penis. If you eat with the right hand, brother, Allah bless you. If you eat with the left hand, shaitan eat with you. If you if if your wife without saying a prayer, shaitan round himself around your penis. So why you are saying to them you should not follow and listen to politician, but you follow for a man, obviously he's ob obviously obviously mentally ill. He make rules of his stupidity. The sun set in mark water, the man have a sperm coming from his backbone. If he have orgasm first, the baby will look like you. If you want to F your wife, you want to have boys, spank her seven times and shout your Ali. If you wear yellow shoes, Allah will, will make your penis uh, 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 strong. If you wear black shoe, I mean Shia and Sunni both, they have the same garbage. The link is not working, guys. Did the link work or not? Did the link I gave you work? Is the link I gave you working, please? If not, I will use a different website to shorten it. It's working, okay. How many of you save it? Save it. For later you might ask me and I will not give it to you. I get really upset <coughs> when people, they were here, they say to me, where, you know, the link, you know, you mentioned in the live stream. So you were here and I post the link and then you ask me later, so do you think I'm your servant? As you see, this is how filthy this Filthy cult is. Filthy. In fact, the word filth cannot describe it. You cannot describe it. This is, cannot be godly act. They are any human, filthy, abusing children, bachabazi, rape is permitted. Hatred is their God. Beating women. You know, a man, he beat a wife. Let us say for the sake of argument, your wife, she is a bad woman. Let us say bad. I want to use the word bad. I don't want you to say, you know, because this is not the reason, by the way, a Muslim can beat his wife. If he feels that she is not being, being, like you say to her, bring me some tea. She don't bring it right away. You can beat her. But let us say for the sake of argument, your wife is bad. Is beating her will solve the problem? No, she will hate you more. She will turn more bad against you. And remember, she is the woman who cook for you. She can put poison of a rat in your food and get rid of you. Oh, my husband have heart attack. 
especially in the old days. Who knows what happened to the guy? Who knows what happened to the guy? So only stupid people, they make such an act against someone, they eat from his hand or her hand. You know, if you are rude with the waiter or waitress in a restaurant, do you know what he can do? He can piss in your food, literally. He piss in it. And if you have a disease, he spit on it. So beating your wife, the mother of your children, does not fix the problem. She will cheat on you. She will bring you shame. If you are not happy with her, then Muslims can divorce their wife by text message. Why do you want to beat her? Islam is oxymoron religion, if we can call it even religion, only is a certification for someone decide to be a donkey. I cannot find any reason for any human being to be part of such a donkey cult unless he is a donkey. As simple as that. Unless he have a mental illness. Unless he have suffered from mental abuse or even physical abuse. Like this guy, I don't know what his problem. But obviously, he say things have nothing to do with his religion, claiming that his religion is better, when we cannot really compare between his religion and any filthy cult in the world. I want to say thank you for being here, and thank you for not being here. And guys, I think you guys are bored of me. Like today, look, we have, we have only 800, 900 <coughs> people. So I will give you a few days off. Maybe next time I come here, I will find people waiting. Obviously, you guys are bored. And I don't have... Uh, I'm not needed that much. So until I see you, maybe a few days from now, maybe a week, I don't know. We will see. Until I see you then, I say may the Lord bless us with mercy and knowledge, because knowledge is from His mercy. The Bible says, my people get destroyed because of their ignorance. And yes, number one reason for nations to be destroyed is their ignorance. Not only nations, individuals. Your ignorance is your enemy. You know, when you walk in the darkness, in your home, the home, the one, the place you spend years in it, the second the light is off, you walk, you hit your foot with the chair, you hit your foot with the table, you hit your foot with the bed, Ignorance. What ignorance? You cannot see. You are ignorant about what is surrounding you just because you lost little light. So imagine you are walking in this earth and you are walking totally in darkness. And then such a scumbag like this is the one who will teach you good manner. When he is following a filthy prophet, have Minus one billion manner. Respect have to be earned, not to be forced. And by the way, he mentioned that one of the good things about Islam that Muslims they protect each other in jail. My friend, I find that this is very funny. Because Muslims in the Middle East, they are a bunch of cowards and they don't protect each other. Don't you know that? When real enemy come to them, they are the first one to run. The Muslim, by the way, they brag about we are aggressive. They are falsely aggressive. Go and see. Go and see. Go and see Hezbollah in Lebanon. Hezbollah is heroes in the front of the Muslim Sunni. Is a chicken in the front of the Christians. Chicken. Do you know what chicken mean? They don't even dare to get close to the Christians. They are chicken in the front of Israel. Saddam Hussein is a hero to attack Kuwait. He is a chicken in the front of the American. So they are heroes only if they notice that you are outnumbered, alone, and weak. The second they see you strong, 
they are literally chicken and they are for rent for hire like in the the hero of Shishenia this guy is just a dog Putin he took his land the army of the Russian destroyed their cities they brought a puppy they made him a president and now this guy he goes he says, Alhamdulillah Bismillah la hawla wa la quwwata illa so supposedly he's a Muslim but the Quran says it clearly take not Christian Jews as a friends or protectors <laughs> this is the Muslims who is, who is the one who killed the Caliphate Muslims who is the one betrayed them, Muslims? Who is the one who took the hair of the beard of Uthman one by one, torturing him? Muslims. Who is the one who refused to bury Uthman between Muslims in graveyard? Muslims. Who is the one who took him from the grave, threw him in the street? Muslims. Who is the one cut his head? Muslims. Who is the one who killed Ali? Muslims. Who is the one who killed Hussein? Hassan. Muslims. Who is the one killed this and that? Muslims. Who is the one who cooked men and ate them to sleep with the women? The hero of Muslims. Ibn al-Walid. So this is Islam, betrayal religion. A Muslim don't trust a Muslim. If you go in the Middle East, the Lord is my witness. When I go, when I was in school, I go to visit a, a, a Muslim, uh, 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 like in my age, I'm a, I'm a teenage. So I go to his house. His girls, his daughter, sorry, his sisters and his mother, they don't, they don't hide. And Muslims, when they sit at home, they wear almost nothing. I mean, I'm shy even to look at them. But the second, another student, another boy from our classroom, he come and he look at the door. And he's a Muslim. All the girls, they hide. And then they make tea for us and they bring to the door and they knock at the door and he go and he pick up the, the tray and the girls have to hide because there's a Muslim inside. But when I am there, the girls, they sit with me. I talk to them. The mother, she bring me a sandwich. They are being very nice to me because I'm a Christian. A Muslim never trust a Muslim. Never. Ever. They trust only Christians. It's a fact. A Muslim, he want to live in a nice area. He go and buy apartment between Christians. He don't trust his kids to go out in the street between Muslims. He trusts his kids to be between Christians. A Muslim want to have a good education for his children. He don't send them to Muslim schools. He send them to Christian schools. If you don't believe me, go check it out with the Middle Eastern. Go check it out and see the truth, my friend. This is how it is. And this guy, do he like to live between Muslims? I challenge him to do so. I challenge him. Go and move to Michigan where there is majority Muslims areas. Let us see if you can live there for a day. And then you will see the fighting and the craziness and the madness and the gossip and everybody is watching everybody. It's a hell. It's not America. What about the West? The West have bad and have good. You know, we have to be honest. You know, if anyone don't like the West, if you are truthful, then you should not live in it. Is that correct? I came from the Middle East. If the West is bad, then why I'm here? Give me a reason. Only hypocrite, they bash a house and they live in it. Do we agree? If this house is filthy, dirty, and you are a free citizen, you can fly, you have money, go. Just go. Who is holding you? Only hypocrites. They bite the dish they eat from. Only. Am I happy with everything in the West? No. But can I compare between the West and any Islamic countries? No. I mean, the most ugly thing in the West is the best thing in the Middle East. <laughs> In fact, any Muslim countries is functioning is functioning because of non-Muslims. Who is the one who cleaned the streets in Dubai? Who is the one fixed electricity? Who is the one who drive you? Who is the one running the grocery store? Who is the one who do wiring for electric? 
Who is the one who fix cars? Who is the one who change your tire? Who is the one who do the plumbing? I mean, if we take those people out, we will find that all of them, they are coming from foreign countries. They cannot even run their country. And now because they have their money, their country look fine. You know, high buildings, shiny buildings, everybody wearing nice white clothes, perfumed money, a lot of money. But this is all would disappear. If the money is gone, the street will be disgusting. It will be like a Pakistan. Go to Pakistan. Okay, Pakistan is a Muslim country. Emirates is a book. What a difference. The difference is, in Pakistan, they cannot afford it to bring foreigners to clean the street. In Dubai, they can. If you leave the country and tell the people of Dubai to clean the street, the street will be dirty. Not a single person from Dubai or from the Emirates will work as a garbage guy. They are so proud of themselves. Those Arab, or brother, or brother, they think they are gods. <laughs> so, if you take those people from the Middle East, you know, you will find that they are, they are bankrupt. They are hungry. They can't even make a sandwich. Who is the one who will be taking me from the airport? A Filipino. Okay, don't, you cannot even drive? No, no, no. Why I want to drive? Hey, driver, driver, you know, driver. Who is the one who want to cook for us? And they bring a girl and then they rape the girl as a maid. Go and see how many Indonesian maid being raped in Saudi Arabia. In fact, a few years ago, and I'm sure Indonesian here they knew, Indonesia stopped sending maids to Saudi Arabia because more than a thousand and two hundred Indonesian maid disappeared. Disappeared, not only rape. I mean, we're not talking about rape no more. We're talking about women dis disappeared. Nobody can find them. This is Saudi Arabia. Go and see prostitution in Dubai and Emirat, in Kuwait, in Qatar, in Bahrain, in Niger, in Egypt. In Egypt, you, a woman, she can't even go in the bus. She will have thousand men touching her ass before she leave the bus. This is the truth. And you know, before I go, actually, as long as we are talking about morality and ethic and etc., you know, beside uh, uh, Bachabazi in Pakistan, I mean, maybe in the Arab countries, especially in the Gulf, is better. You never know, you know. We never know, right? But the story is not what they say. The Middle East is a messed up, messed up land. They talk about nightclub in the West. Go to Turkey, go to Emirat, go to Bahrain, go to Oman, go to Kuwait. Brother, praise be to Allah. Look at this, brother. Look how beautiful it is. Look what the women, they are shaking, they are shaking it for the sake of Allah. Isn't it, this is beautiful? All, by the way, were in hijab. But this is from the mercy of Allah. This is a very conservative religion. Look at this. How beautiful. You know, I don't know how I can describe it for you, but it's so beautiful. You know, women shaking their ass in a very sexual way. Uh, I mean, I don't want to know what to, what to show you, but there are some videos actually, they will not be allowed to be seen. Just give me a second. To be sure, we are not showing something very appropriate. Uh, <clears throat> All right, those like they look fine. I mean, literally, a little bit fine. Uh, yeah. 
you want somebody in your look at this subhanallah subhanallah they put their ass up and there's hundreds of men around them and they start shaking and then they sleep in the top of each other and then they start touching each other they are wearing hijab this is just look look at this look at this they bend over literally and the guy he come from behind her and he grab her look this woman she is sitting in the top of the other woman brother this is the Islamic society which is the Muslim they keep saying it is really so decent not like the West look the guy here is putting some dollars in the top of her ass I mean that is a good business the ass business this is in this is the public now we don't know what will happen after and the funny is when you play in those videos you will see saying Allah 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 you know look at this Allah 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 and all of them look at the Arabian men very conservative society it's very conservative you don't know you have no idea what conservative is just look this woman the camera is just behind her ass look at this one I mean the, her ass is up to Allah this is even how they dance is that how, how women dance what is this women in the top of each other women kissing each other the man putting his hand between her legs the man jumping in the top of her this is public this is not uh, like secret Look, this guy is looking at her ass and praising Allah. And he's saying takbir. So, obviously, Mr. Shaheed Bolson is a bullshit. Literally, is a bullshit guy. He's, he's bullshitting you, speaking about morality of the Islamic countries and how bad Western countries. Now, how many of you will download the video, share it everywhere so we can get them busted? I will leave that for you. So, I want to say thank you all for being here and thank you for not coming. And I will give you a few days, maybe vacation, so you can get rid of me and not being bored. Because I noticed we have a drop of number of people watching today for some reason. So, I, you know, obviously, today is, wasn't a good day uh, to go live. Thank you very much. May the Lord bless you. For those who choose to be blind, it's your fault. For those who to be children of light, it's your choice. God is good, so is Jesus. And Muhammad is nothing but a scumbag person. And whoever tried to praise him, he is praising the devil. And we can conquer all their claims about how good he is, as easy as one, two, three. This is how easy it is. Thank you. God bless you and see you soon again. Take care.